G'day. Trooper Cody and Steve, one of our light horse videos. And you might notice I'm not wearing my slouch hat with a emu feather. And that's because we've made a couple of other videos about the light horse on the Western Front. And so it seemed appropriate to show you what the guys wore on the Western Front. Now when World War I started, 1914, the Australians, light horse or infantry, they went off to war in slouch hats. Photos that you will see of them at Gallipoli will show they wore their slouch hats. They wore the British service cap. And they also wore a type of pith helmet, which they called a sun helmet. And there's uh, uh, some good photos of the guys on Gallipoli where they're wearing, you know, a group of blokes will have a mishmash of those, those helmets. Now they went off in those soft hats because there was no hard hat. So when you think that back in the 15th, 16th century, hundreds of years ago, they came up with the idea of canister shot. Now what canister shot was, instead of cannonballs, they made a, basically a little hollow wooden container and they filled it with bits of metal, rocks, uh, small musket balls, all rusty nails. They filled it with all this sort of rubbish, metal rubbish. And when they fired the cannon, the canister, the, the container, disintegrated and it was fired from the cannon basically like a shotgun. And it came very effective in some conflicts because when the foot soldiers of the enemy were coming close, you could fire the canister. That came out of the cannon in a conical shape. The artillery guys worked out that if you fired it to the ground, just in front of the infantry, the conical shape hit the ground, flattened out, and then came up flat into the troops. And this was still basically like using a shotgun. So in the 1700s, mid-1700s, a, 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 a young officer in the Royal Artillery, his name is uh, Lieutenant Shrapnel, in his own time, at his own expense, because the generals won't help him, decides, what if I can make a cannonball explode? What if I can make a cannonball hollow? put gunpowder inside, explosives inside, and musket balls inside, fire the cannonball, and then, instead of having a shotgun blast coming out of a cannon, we'll have a single projectile come out of the cannon, which will then explode at a given distance. So it worked out fuses, and they're a bit dodgy because you had to light the fuse on the cannonball, put it in the cannon, fire it, and then hope it exploded when you wanted it to. Well, basically what happened from the mid-1700s, Shrapnel's idea was perfected and perfected and perfected to the point where they had timed shells filled with large round balls. They could fire at the troops and it would explode above their head and shower down these projectiles on the troops. By the First World War, by 1914, these are perfected and so you find the Australians, you find all troops were going into the First World War in the trenches, Gallipoli, and they were finding these shells exploding above them. They're in trenches, they're in foxholes at Gallipoli. Snipers can't get them. And then right above their head is an explosion and they're peppered with fire. And so what was happening was in the early stages of the war, Troops were suffering from massive head, head and shoulder injury. So what happens is the French are the first and they decide they're going to make like a basic steel skull cap and the local French troops whack it on their head and then they put a cloth cap over the top of that to hold the steel skull cap. That was the, first, that was the start of it. 1914, early 1915. Then a Frenchman surnamed Adrian decides to make an actual steel helmet for the troops. 
Now when you look at Adrian's helmet on the French troops, maybe a little bit like what the Spanish wore at the time of the Spanish Armada, if you look at what those guys wore, similar sort of thing. French helmet. The problem with the French helmet was very difficult to make. It was a funny shape. You know, the French Art Deco, everything's beautiful. So their helmet was all nicely shaped and fluted. Not easy to make. So, in London, 1915, John Brodie comes up with this idea of just a round, flat, round piece of heavy steel whack it with a stamp to press it into the shape that you see here and this helmet that I'm wearing is the, let's call it the Brody helmet that was designed just to sit on the top of your head and protect you in a trench from shells being fired down on top of you so this helmet, the Brody helmet, the original one was only made for about three weeks before another person, you can look up all the names if you want to, but another person decided that if they added magnesium to the steel, make it harder, so that happened. So the original Brody was only made for three weeks before the magnesium Brody came into effect. And then a little while later, all of the things that are wrong with this helmet in its initial design it was a bit wobbly on your head. It was light reflective. It was too sharp on the edge. All of those things were rectified. So it was the summer of 1915, European summer, when the French helmet first came out. The first of the one I'm wearing the Brody, the first of them, were issued to the troops in September of 1915. Depending on um, the battalion, there is either 500 or 1,000 men in a battalion. These helmets were initial, initially issued 50 to the battalion, and they were then they were left in the trenches. You didn't have a personal issue helmet. They were left in the trenches for the the next soldier to come in. It weighed two and a half pounds or one kilo and it always remained a one piece pressing. So the one that was originally around for only three weeks is called the Type A Helmet Steel Mark One, I think is the original army name. Type A was the one for three weeks. Type B is the one with the magnesium. By April 1916, April 1916, war's been going a while, is when it's finally every single soldier has a personal issue helmet. As you can imagine in the trenches there was a whole range of names for the helmet and they included the shrapnel helmet, the battle bowler, the tommy hat, the tin hat, the dishpan hat, the wash basin hat, the doughboy helmet, and the Germans referred to it as the tommy salad bowl. By the end of the war, by 1918, uh, November 1918, a staggering seven and a half million of these helmets had been made. One and a half million of that number were made in America, in the USA, where they were called the M1917 helmet, even though you heard that one of its nicknames was the Doughboy helmet. And so that's what the helmet is, and it's served its purpose, I guess, because it was meant to be sheltering in a trench with fire raining down on you. What happened during the course of 1418 was that it was found that exploding shells became more effective at killing men than the case shot. So we had canister, which is a shotgun blast out of the cannon. Case shot is when it's encased, fired, and then explodes. So by 1918, we're seeing the end of case because high explosives have become so much more effective 
that they are um, phasing out case using high explosive. The helmet then becomes somewhat redundant for protecting downwards. And if you look now at the police forces and armies, at all the helmet they wear, it'll show you how the development has completely changed from this flat basin. No wonder they call it the washbowl helmet. But the, the last little fact I'm going to leave you with, when I said case shot was just about over in 1918, what do you think's happened with case and canister now in modern warfare? They are realizing that they can use a type of canister case shot again in um, American tanks because what happens is you have got vehicles and foot soldiers and you can fire these uh, if you've got friend, foot soldiers amongst friendly armoured vehicles you can now fire the case canister shot and you can take out the infantry and not damage the vehicles so that's why just recently this is, the case canister is starting to make a little bit of a, of a comeback sidetracked as I often get sidetracked sorry to make you jump with all the hand movement mate and there's the story of the World War I Brody helmet far more well known really than the Adrian I guess unless you're French Anyway, cheers. Hope you enjoyed the video and until next time, subscribe now, you hear? Thank you.